everybody um welcome back to the channel um my name's Haley. i know that michael is the one that you are typically listening to but i'm usually like behind the scenes like editing and stuff but here i am to talk about one of my favorite cosplays ever which is my um, luna lovegood costume and specifically the luna lovegood costume that she wears at the quidditch match with the massive lion head and the crazy sweater which um, I mostly made. So I'm very excited to share. It's been a costume that I have just loved from reading the books the first time. Um, when I was a kid, I was about Harry Potter's age when the Order of the Phoenix came out. And Luna was that character that like really spoke to me. She was really weird. She really just wanted to do her own gig. She didn't care about what other people were thinking about her. And I was like, ah, oh, finally a character that I like super just related to. And so now in my adult life, I still celebrate her. I celebrate her uniqueness. And she's, she's just always been one of those characters that I've just tried to channel like in my everyday life. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, I've made quite a few, and Michael and I have made together quite a few of Luna's costumes. Um, this costume specifically was, it was very interesting for me because I've been through several stages of it. I will go into like everything specifically, but I made the hat back in, I think, end of 2017, 2018. And this sweater I just finished past January. So um, it's been a costume that I've been adding to and it's always been in like my like my cosplay closet that I've always wanted to put on. I, I love wearing the lion head even though it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I still absolutely love wearing it. So it's been a cosplay that I've just kept adding on. So I'm going to tell you all about my full journey of Luna Lovegood's Quidditch outfit. <laughs> So like every project that we do, we um, go into it with a lot of research. When I began looking into making the lion head, um, which was like I said, like back in 2017, there wasn't a ton of people who had made it before. Now I feel like it's been like a burst of people making lion heads and it's a beautiful thing because they're always fabulous. Um, and, but I remember going in to look and see if other people have done it just to kind of get inspiration and kind of like look into it. And I remember finding a YouTube video, which I will 100% link right down below. Um, I believe it was Enchanted Sea, if I'm not correct, but I will be sure to link it. Um, and they did a whole time lapse of them making the lion head. And it gave me a lot of inspiration because um, they used just a basic baseball cap to use it as the base and I thought that was really smart and so I kind of like watched that video a few times and then kind of inspiration and then I just kind of like got into the groove of making it and then with the rest of the pieces I had thrifted items um the sweater I'll get into but it's part thrifted part hand embroidered and also I looked at the studio tour um they have they have pictures of the actual line head like on display so uh, this was before i had actually been to the studio tour myself i looked at a lot of pictures online to get inspiration from that i had never made like a 3d build before <laughs> it was my first time and I, i'm still very proud of it even though it was my first time um so i just kind of kind of looked at different reference images from the movie and then what i envisioned it from the book and just kind of played with it the rest of the pieces I thrifted and then I thrifted and altered and then yeah it was like so I'm going to go through the whole process of me making it and then kind of show you each step what I did. So I feel like I'm going to go into each piece individually and I'm going to start with the lion head because it's the most iconic and that's what I want to talk about first. <laughs> okay so like I said before the inside of the hat was just a just a basic cap you can see all the glue gun stains and i'm going to insert pictures here of my process my work in progress when i was making it because i was i was smart at the time and i took work in progress pictures which i can't say for everything um so the front of the hat or the bottom of the hat is actually it's just a baseball cap and then i used foam balls um there's two foam balls here there's two foam balls here and then there's like a half circle on the top. And then I just really just kind of draped the fabric over it. 
So you can see here, I kind of like, um, I draped, I draped the front first and then here's a seam. So I just kind of draped it and then cut a seam. And then on the sides, it's like just more, it's more hot glue. And then, um, <laughs> On the sides, it's like, I, it took me a while to get it kind of even. And she is a little bit lopsided, but it's fine. And then um, on the bottom here, Michael graciously covered the trim with, uh, he sewed this part here so it looks nice and covered. And he actually made these flaps beautifully done. He made the flaps and then um, he's the lining fabric that we had and then um, sewed that over there. And the rest of it was just kind of embellishments. So the eyes are just two gold buttons that I like used a Sharpie to do the black. This is felt with which I just, just did like a very loose stitch to make it, to make it look like a child made it, <laughs> which, um, and then the teeth are styrofoam that I just like not like kind of cut into like a shape. And then we just use twine to, um, I'm going to show this one cause it looks prettier to, uh, <laughs> just wrap it around. This one has been remade again, so that's why she's kind of coming apart, but she's okay. It's from far away, no one will ever know. And then um, the ears, Michael made the ears. They are uh, like, they're padded. So there's just a little bit of stuffing in there. And then um, this is like a duck fabric, I think. And then this is basically all this fabric we had was scrap fabric, except for all this. We bought some of this, but then um, this I had found like in a bin somewhere, like um, in a like fabric store. Sometimes they put like scrap fabric in a bin. So I just like, oh, that's pretty. So I kept it. And then um, let's see. And you can see how this is padded. Michael just sewed it down to make it look like ears. And then whoo, lots and lots of beautiful mullet gorgeousness and then so i'll insert lots of lots of progress pictures because it just was a fabulous mullet for a while this is just a mixture of ribbon fabric uh mesh and it's just hot glued hot glued hot glued forever um i burnt my fingers many times but it was fine they've they've recovered and then it was like, what I did too, was I kind of did shorter on the top and then it just kept getting longer and longer until she was like a beautiful flowing wine goddess. And then the back of the cap, you can see is right there. She gets covered up by all of the gorgeousness. And then when I put it on, we have a strap here and then the strap here and then I just kind of embellished this a little bit. I just looked to the movie one to see how that was. And like I said, even though she's a little bit lopsided, if I kind of turn the side, you'll never know. <laughs> so that's why most of my pictures are from the side. But yeah, it's all, it's all good. Um, I have no plans of ever making this again because even though I absolutely love this one, it was a lot and I'm very proud of it. So I'll keep it. And so the next thing I really want to talk about is this sweater, which I like just loved. So when we went to the studio tour in 2018, there's like a little, little part of the studio tour, which is my favorite part of the whole studio tour, um, where you can see Luna's like closet pieces. And this is hanging in it. Not this one, but the jacket that she wears in the Quidditch match. And I was, I looked at Michael, I was like, Michael, I, we have, to, I have to have that in my life. And so, <laughs> um, I it was one of those things that I, I knew, I knew I could do it because I had an idea what the technique was, but I knew it was going to be very time consuming and probably just, just take a lot of planning, which it was. So, um, I'm going to insert some of my work in progress pictures. So what I did was I found this sweater. I found it on Poshmark.com, which is like a like an online like resale place where people like resell clothes on it. So I thought that the the look of this one looked right. It was just a blue sweater. And then the brand was just Liz Claiborne just Liz wear jeans. And then it was just like the right sweater material. And so I went and bought yarn and I tried to match the colors to the studio as best I could. I I didn't, I didn't like go 
like I didn't care super much about matching the colors perfectly because it's like I thought what I found at I think I found these at Michael's I thought it was already good enough so I was like eh, that works so what I did with the sweater is I just drew out a pattern and I would draw out like this part gray this part blue and I just drew on a sharpie just right on the sweater and then put G B R Y and then um so then I just had a pattern so then Really all I did was I just got my yarn and I will try to, I have videos of me like doing it too. I just made loops. Like all it is is just hundreds and hundreds of little loops where I made a loop, sewed around it, made a loop, sewed around it. And I would double knot it just to make sure like none of them came off. There's a few that I was like not double knotting great. So a little bit of hangage here and there, but Overall, it it's like held up. I wore it um, to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and thankfully it was in January, so it wasn't that hot. Even though it it was a hard morning <laughs> for my line hat and my sweater in Orlando heat, but it was fine. I survived. And then I wore it the next day, like with, which was a Sunday, and it was actually cold that day. And I was just wearing it with my normal clothes, and I was like living my best life in this sweater. I just I just loved it. So all in all. I would say it took about about two to three weeks of me like continuously working on it. Um, I actually have really good memories of working on this sweater because Michael and our best friend Whitney, we would go to like a brewery and then we'd all bring our little projects we were working on and we would just do like our hand sewing while we just catched up. So that was really, that was really sweet. And then um, just during my lunch breaks at work, I would just get in my car and it was it's like I always recommend hand sewing to people that like just like to to have like a busy thing to do because this was just repetitive. Like sometimes it got me so mad because I'm like, oh my back hurts so bad, I just want to be done with it. But honestly, like it's just this like mindless thing that just kind of like zones me out a little bit, and I kind of need that sometimes in my life. Um, it's kind of like stress relieving, so it was a good project for that. Um, and yeah, I'm just super happy with how it turned out. And I absolutely love the sweater. The next things I want to talk about with this costume are Luna's shoes. Um, like I said before, this costume has been kind of a journey. So when I started doing this costume, I had made my own pair of Converse, which were um, a pair of Converse that I painted myself. And I'm still like really proud of these. I just hand painted some flowers on. I try to match the design of her her converse that she wears, uh, she especially wears it with the, uh, like the quibbler outfit. So I have that costume too, but I, I, I assume she wears it with this one too. <laughs> um, so I just kind of hand painted, like I just followed the pattern of the shoes. And then I had a friend from Instagram actually, uh, send me the shoes. <laughs> like it was like a, like a random thrift find for them. So it was like really serendipitous. So I ended up getting like her actual shoes and, um, it's not her actual shoes, but the shoes she wears in the movies, the same Converse design. It's called, I I will insert what the description is below because I had looked for these shoes like on eBay for so long until this glorious, beautiful person blessed me. Um, it's like a corduroy. And then I think it's called like, like fall flowers. I don't know. I'll link it below because I remember the search term because I had looked for for, for so long I was checking that's another thing I like to do is check eBay from time to time to see if any of her like clothing comes up and people don't know it's her clothing it happens sometimes but um yeah these were these these are it these are the shoes the same converse she wears and if I compare the ones I made to these like not so bad um, the only difference in the movie is that she, uh, the costume designer covered up the converse part. They had, like added more flowers to paint, like I guess like paint over it to so the brand doesn't show. But yeah. And then with Luna, I um I wear a wig. So this wig is actually it's actually two wigs. It's a wig and hair extensions sewed on together. Um, I still have my uh, slughorn barrette in it because when I wear the line hat, you don't see the back. So I just I just left that in. Um, so with the wig, I will link the shop below if they still have the wig. I found it on Etsy but, and, um, it didn't have bangs, but I ended up, I ended up cutting my own bangs for, for Luna. Um, so I cut bangs here, I cut bangs here, and then 
I don't know if you could see it well, but there is like hair extensions sewn onto the back. This is, this is kind of where the seam ends. I just took up some hair extensions that I found on eBay. And if I can, if I can link them, I will. Um, I found on eBay and I literally just took a needle and thread and just sewed them into the, to the back. That way it just gave it more length because her hair is like super, super long. And um, with this wig I found on, on Etsy that it just blends in really nicely. You can barely like, you can barely see how different it is. It was like a really, really good match for the wig. So that's what I did for that. And then the socks, pants, and sweater all thrifted. The sweater, I found it at, I found it at Goodwill. It's just a, a gray turtleneck. And it's honestly like you, <laughs> it's not worth finding the exact brand because it's just a gray turtleneck. And then with the socks, if they still have them on Amazon, I'll link them. I've always said with Luna that I want to uh, do better with the socks, but I'm always, every time I think I like put her on, I'm like, oh, these still work good enough. They're, these socks here, I'll link them if I can find them again, but it's just the top that I like, the blue, the black, blue, and the white. It kind of looks like her, her socks, so it, I think it's good enough. And then the pants... Just another, just another Goodwill find. And her pants are kind of, in that scene, they're kind of like cropped. Like they're like high water pants. I don't know if you, that's what they call them. And these aren't, so I just kind of rolled them up and it works. But another thing I wanted to show was, uh, before I wore this sweater that I'm wearing right now, I wore the, the look, I'll post a picture, where she's walking into the great hall and she's in a sweater vest so I made this initially to wear with my um with my Luna costume my Luna hat so this was just a just a just another Goodwill blue sweater it's not screen accurate in the slightest and then all I did was I got some yarn and I got some some blue ribbon that I just I think I just had it on hand and with the yarn, I just kind of made it into like a little ball with my hands and I just used a needle and thread to sew it in. And the same with the ribbon, I just kind of patterned it out. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to like post like a comparison picture of like the, what the AccuScreen, the screen used one was, but it's just like a sweater with like knitted little, little ball stem things. And so I just kind of copied that and it's, it's, it worked. <laughs> And so that's it. That's like the whole life story of my Luna, my Luna Quidditch costume. It's one of my, probably the work I'm proud of, most proud of in a cosplay. I, I love wearing it. I think I have, I have the best time wearing it. Sometimes it gets pretty uncomfortable. I can only wear it for like, like a few hours, especially in the Florida heat. But Anytime I see a little kid and they know it's Luna, like, oh, it makes me so emotional. Um, and I just love it. So um, we, we really like doing these types of videos where we kind of just like break down some of our costumes. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. We, um, we, we want to go through all of our costumes. We, we feel like we put so much work into them. We just like really like talking about them. <laughs> So if that's something that's interesting to you too, please, please let us know. And please check out our social media for more pictures. Um, Michael is on Instagram as the wizard Taylor, and I'm on Instagram as Hobbit party. And yeah, so that should be it. Thank you guys for watching. Keep the magic alive. Bye.